Hi, John Rhodes here. Welcome back and thanks for tuning in. In this video presentation, I'm looking at a case of internal resorption. We'll be looking at how to spot internal resorption on a radiograph and CBCT, and then the kind of things that you might come across when treating a case with this defect. Hope you enjoy it. Here you can see the preoptive radiograph of the mandibular right first molar. The tooth was still vital but was symptomatic. It's been restored with an amalgam restoration. The preoptive radiograph shows an area of internal resorption on the distal root, and you can tell that this is internal resorption. Firstly, the tooth is still vital, but there's no ghost area of root canal superimposed on the area of resorption. The canal shape has been distorted. There's irritation dentine in the pulp chamber and two separate canals in the mesial aspect. Here I'm scanning through the axial view of a small volume CBCT of the tooth and you can see the resorption defect in the distal root. The resorption occurs at the junction between vital pulp tissue and necrotic pulp tissue where there are a lot of inflammatory mediators. Obviously when the tooth finally becomes totally necrotic this leaves an irregular void. The amalgam restoration was quickly removed with a long tapered diamond burr and then I started to make my access into the pulp chamber using a tungsten and carbide LN burr. At this point, I just break through the roof of the pulp chamber and expose the bleeding pulp. Here you can see pulp tissue lying on the floor of the pulp chamber. I then rinse the entire pulp chamber with 3% sodium hypochlorite. <music> Using
using high magnification to investigate the pulp floor, you can see the irregular outline of the resorption defect. There's also bleeding pulp tissue in the distal root. At this point I got my first estimation of working length. I later exposed a diagnostic working length radiograph as you'll see. There were four canals, all prepared using nickel titanium reciprocating instrumentation, wave one gold and edge files. Copious amounts of 3% sodium hypochlorite were used to irrigate and patency filing with a size 10 flexophile between instruments. A diagnostic working length radiograph was exposed to confirm the working lengths. Preparation was completed with a primary reciprocating instrument. This has a size 25 tip and a variable taper. The distal canal is bleeding quite heavily and this is something that you'll commonly find with internal resorption cases where the tooth is still vital. Inflamed and bleeding pulp tissue was removed using 3% sodium hypochlorite agitated with an Irisafe ultrasonic tip. Now thoroughly disinfected and cleaned, you can see the irregular morphology of the distal canal where the internal resorption has eaten away at the root canal walls. I used a vertically compacted gutta perca technique to obturate the root canals and here you can see sealer has been forced into apical lateral canals and deltas. I did this before building up the core preparation. 
So here we are again, the preoptive radiograph showing the irregular internal resorption defect in the distal canal. And finally, my completed result, the final radiograph with good coronal apical seal and a composite restoration in the pulp chamber. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to stay tuned because there's loads more cases in the pipeline. How about subscribing if you haven't already? And above all, enjoy your endo.